Today's unnecessarily specific Factorio strategy video is also about Rocket Rush Death World Marathon, which we have been speedrunning a bit recently. Um, this is a base with a silo that has just launched a rocket, so it's pretty happy. Um, the base overall is doing the weird low buffers builds turning off things that speedrun bases do when their goals are met. Um, this is basically the entire base. There's a bunch of green ships for blue chips and RCUs, there's a bit of LDS, um, there's no science, Rocket Rush doesn't need us to do science, so in a kind of wave defense way, this is simpler than a base would usually be, but there are still a couple of places with some hidden complexity that isn't on screen for very long, including today's topic, the coal buffer. Quite a lot of, um, yeah, quite a few Factorio speedrun categories use a coal buffer of some kind, uh, default settings, death world, wave defense, things that use random map categories because starter coal is not really good enough to support all the things you want to do with the coal later. So we get mining all of it earlier, we put a bunch of it in boxes, and then later on in the game, when the demand increases for power grid and for plastic, we can pull coal from these boxes and um, in, to get a so, yeah to get a supply of coal that exceeds what we can just mine straight out of a patch. Um, so the exact geometry of this thing doesn't really matter as long as it fills up our whole belt. Um, but yeah, especially especially a big deal in a marathon settings where the low density structure is so expensive on plastic. Um, I was wondering whether or not I would also need to outpost coal just as part of this plan, just to get enough to make all this plastic for this low density structure. Um, but having said all of that, it's the end of a speedrun, this coal buffer is full, which is not how it usually works. So what's going on here? Uh, was this bad and slow, or is this plan somehow quite different to how a usual coal buffer works? Um, the answer is kind of yes to several of those. Let's talk about the life cycle of this particular coal buffer in Death World Marathon Rocket Rush. So we start with a little coal buffer, it's basically for hand feeding. We don't need a whole lot, but we do want to put burner miners on copper because we want some kind of copper. We've got this kind of steel hand fed in the mall thing that we never bother automating a fuel supply for. We just hand feed fuel of that. Sometimes it's even solid fuel or wood or whatever. Doesn't really matter. And then also in a, in a normal speed run way, we want to be fueling these furnaces as we're building these smelting columns to just get them operational earlier um, so yeah phase phase one little hand feeding coal buffer makes a lot of sense um, phase two is again a very normal coal buffer thing of just mine all of the coal and put it all in these boxes because we're going to need all of it and usually phase three is just hey our usage has increased start drawing from the buffer and in this case it's not quite that straightforward because we want it for power grid and we want it for plastic the thing that's different about yeah, Rocket Rush Wave, Rocket Rush Death World Marathon is, yes, there's a lot of plastic uh, that we get out, but there's also, when we build the kit Petrochem, there's also solid fuel and there's also rocket fuel. And the trick that we do here is we prioritize the solid fuel into the power grid. And that means that even as all of this Petrochem build goes down, the coal usage doesn't really increase by that much, and in some cases might even decrease, and we might end up putting more of it in the buffer. Um, especially as at that point in the run, the power grid usage isn't even that big. Like, the big, the big power draw is when we're doing blue chips and RCUs, and we throw all of these beacons around, um, beaconing the Assembler 3s with the productivity modules. This, this here is the big power grid draw, and when we do that, yeah, we start hitting the coal a lot more, but we've also still got it buffered. But there is yet another phase of different buffer behavior after that, because at some point we will finish making rocket fuel, um, as it turns out this, this is usually happening before everything else, and so it's kind of turned into the plan that we take out all the rocket fuel assemblers, not just because we're done with rocket fuel, but because also this means now we've got a bunch more solid fuel that can go into the power grid that can reduce the demand of the coal which means we've got more coal for the smelting and the plastic and the things that we can't do in any way other than being coal and yeah and so this is essentially how we avoided having to outpost coal in that the the crude oil outpost needs to be slightly bigger because we're running more power grid off crude oil but we didn't really have a choice about whether or not we outposted crude oil we had to go and get some kind of outpost of crude oil so we just look for a slightly bigger one and this means that we completely skip 
having to outpost coal at all. So that was a nice trick. Um, yeah, I like I like not having to do outposts. It's fast. It's good for speedruns. Um, so yeah, I mean overall, during the run, the plan is still just build this coal buffer and then don't think about it again. Um, but there is yeah possibly more detail than you were interested in knowing about the different phases of coal going in and out of this thing that ultimately is just like yeah we still just ignore it and make things work and it's fine we just go fast fewer outposts more bedroom it's fine 